Well, good afternoon, everybody. I think it's afternoon. It's five o'clock here. Hey, thanks for joining us. Um, if you pick up on this later, thank you. God bless you. I want to I wanna share a thought with you that the Lord gave to me earlier this week, and I think it'd be apropos. I woke up one morning and he made a statement to me. He said, think about what you think about. And, you know, we've all heard that we need to watch our thoughts. But, but he kind of made a directive to me for me to write in there at that moment and during the day to think seriously about what I'm thinking about and, and not just let my brain go random. Let me tell you why uh, he said that to me. Because if you're like me, and I think you are, by the time you get out of bed in the morning and you get in there, if you're like me, you get a cup of coffee and Lisa and I'll sit down and start thinking about and talking about the day and talking about the Word of God and we'll pray. And by the time I get into the church, I'm, I'm no longer thinking about what I want to think about. I'm thinking about what everybody else wants me to think about. I'm thinking about uh, the church or the lawn or the service or the ushers or, or the guest speaker. And, and someone is placing a demand on what I've got going on inside of my head. And so... That morning when I woke up, the Lord said this to me, and I'm going to say it several times. Think about what you think about. Don't allow someone else to control your thoughts. So, um, so what, what, I, what he asked me to do, and I started doing this every single morning. I wake up, and before I get going, I decide what I'm going to think about. Now, let me give you a few things that I do. And I do this religiously. The first thing I will do in the morning is I will wake up, 1 Peter 5, 7, and I will spin. And I'm not talking about just a passing thought. I, I'm talking about something a little deeper than that. I'm talking about a little bit like the Bible talks about meditation or muttering the word. And I'll start off with 1 Peter 5, 7. Uh, it says, cast all your cares on me for I care for you. And I'll sit there and I'll go, you know, there's nothing that's going to happen to me today that God and I can't handle. God cares about me. He cares about where I go, what I do, what's happening to me. He cares about, that, you know, and I realize this, and I want you to think seriously about what I'm fixing to say. What is there, 7 billion, 8 billion people on the earth? How many of those people do you think you're going to fix? You're, none of them. There's really only one person you have the control over to fix, and that's you. you. You've got to decide. Now listen to the way I say it. I'm going to have a good day. Uh, I'm not talking about I'm going to have a good day because the circumstances are going to give me a good day. I've decided that I'm going to have a good attitude. And so I always start off with 1 Peter 5, 7. I cast the care of everything I can't fix, everybody I can't fix, and everything that's going on on this planet, and I just give it to God. And then I will do what I can do, but I know that I'm in His hands, and so I cast all my cares on the Lord, and I refuse to worry about anything. Now, now, now I may spend a good three or four or five, maybe, maybe 10 minutes thinking about that. You, you know, now get what I'm saying. Because if you don't think about it on purpose, I got news for you, it ain't happening. So the next thing I will think about is Hebrews 10, 19. Now, listen to this. Um, it says, we have boldness to enter the throne by the blood of Jesus. Now, now, what a thought. What a great thought. Satan is constantly bombarding our minds with, we didn't do this right, we didn't do that right, or we didn't do enough of this. Our ability to go in the throne room of God and get our prayers answered has nothing to do with your, with your performance. It has totally to do with the blood, the blood of Jesus. So I will lay there and I will get thankful. Father, boy, I'm thankful today for the blood of Jesus that I can come in your throne room and pray and seek your face and get prayers answered. I thank you for the blood. I thank you for the throne. And I'll just, I'll just lay there and think about it. Now, another thing I'll do, and, and, and I don't do all of these every morning, but I do, I'll, I'll go down a list pretty much like this. 1 John 4.4, 4, greater is he that's in me than he that's in the world. And I'll just sit back and meditate for a minute that when, uh, when I was born again, filled with the Holy Ghost, the Holy Ghost came in and, and the greater one's in me. 
I won't face a problem today that, that me and God can't fix, that I won't, he won't give me the answer to, he won't, give me, he won't help me. And so I'll just lay there for a few minutes and think about it. And then I'll begin to think about this, Acts 9, 6. What do you want me to do today? What do you want me to do? And I'll, start, I'll just pray a few minutes ago. Is there anything you, I mean, I got, I got things I need to be doing today. I got, I got to get into the church. I got an appointment at noon. I, I, I've got things that I got to have done before the sun goes down. But is there anything you want me to get done today? Is there, an, you want to change my plans and give me something? And am I thinking about everything? And I just say, I just give it to him and say, you know what? Uh, Paul prayed that prayer on the road, on the road to Damascus when he got born again. He said, Lord, what do you want me to do? And that doesn't go for just today. That may go for, the, for this week. And I'll just lay there and think, now, Father, I thank you. I commit my day to you, and I'll just, I'll just be thankful. And the last one, and sometimes it's the first one, is 1 Thessalonians 5.18, in everything give thanks. You know, we live in a world today that people are not thankful for what they have. I mean, we live in the greatest nation in the world, and people act like, like the world is on their shoulders and everything's bad. Well, I'll tell you something, everything's not bad. Uh, I'm not dead. I'm not in hell. I'm not in jail. I'm not in a hospital. <laughs> and if I was, I'd still be thankful. But, but still, what it, you, you got to sit back and make yourself think, what do I have to be thankful for right now? I have a good wife. I have a house. I, got, I, I slept in air conditioner last night. I, uh, I took a bath. I took a shower. I got breakfast in the refrigerator. I got, you know, there, there's so many good things around us. You know, I think sometimes we just get so busy, we get so busy caught up with what's going on that we're just, we're not thankful. In, in uh, Romans 1, it says, in the last days, people are not thankful. And I'm watching the news and watching a little bit of the media and I'm watching stuff going on and I'm going, do people even, are they even thankful for anything? We live in the greatest nation in the world. There's a church on every street corner. Thank God for that. Amen. Come on. Don't shout me down because I'm preaching real good. Now, before I get go, before I stop, I want to read one more thing to you. The other day, Lisa and Justin and I went to see Dr. Varallo, and um, while we were sitting there talking to her, she made a statement to me, and she told me a story, and I want to tell you this story because, because, it's, because the Lord has brought this up many, many times in my mind. She said one day she went to a meeting, and she prayed for a guy in a wheelchair, and he did not get healed. He didn't get out of the wheelchair. And she said it bothered her. And so when she left the meeting and got off alone, she kind of jumped on the Lord and said, hey, God, what gives? I mean, she's asking a question like, I prayed for this guy in a wheelchair. And I mean, I, and I had a prompting that for the anointing was there for him to get out of that wheelchair. And she, and she jumped on the Lord. And what, what gives? What happened back there? And, um, and when she, she prayed that, and Jesus said to her, my friend, what did you see? And she fired back at God. She goes, I saw a man in a wheelchair. And he said, I rest my case. And she went, oh. What was he saying to her? He gave her an anointing to pray for this man in a wheelchair. She sees him in a wheelchair. And she still sees him in a wheelchair. Is she mixing faith with that? No, she's not mixing faith with that. So the, here's the last thing I want you to think about. When's the last time you sat back and thought about where you want to go and what you want to do. I mean, when I wake up and I'm working on a sermon, uh, I, don't, I don't think about uh, the few people in church or the ones that won't be here or, or the problems that are going on in the world today. I'm thinking about the Holy Ghost coming. I'm thinking about people being in church. I'm thinking about people being born again. I, I'm going to choose to think on good things. I'm going to choose to see what God wants me to see. Now, it may not be happening, but I'm choosing to see this church the way I'm praying. In other words, I'm, I'm seeing God move even when he isn't moving. I'm seeing God blessing me. I'm seeing blessed. I'm seeing my best days are ahead of me. I'm seeing them with long life. I, and, and, and you know what? This is what faith is all about, isn't it? And um, and I want to I want to I want to quote something. I, and I used to have it out on the foyer, and I want to just say it again. If you can't see what you can't see, you'll never see it. Now let me say it again. If you can't see what you can't see, 
you'll never see it. We're people of vision. The Holy Spirit is visionary. He'll always show you the future by faith. Abraham saw himself the father of nations, and yet he was impotent. That's the way God talks. I want to know what you're seeing, and I want to know what you're thinking about. What are you allowing to be the dominant thoughts that are controlling your mind? Are you controlling what is in your head, or is circumstances controlling what's going on in your head? And I'm going to read a scripture to you. I'm actually going to read two of them. In Philippians 4, 8, it says, Finally, brethren, whatever things are true, whatever's noble, whatever's just, whatever's pure, whatever's lovely, Whatever things are a good report, if there's a virtue, if there's anything praiseworthy, meditate or think on these things. You and I have a choice on what we're meditating on and what we're thinking about. Now, one more scripture, Philippians 4, 11. Not that I speak in regard to need. I've learned in whatever state I'm in to be content. The literal Greek reading of that is I've learned in whatever state to be independent of the circumstances. Circumstances are going to demand you think a certain way. There's going to be enough bad happen. There's going to be enough crazy stuff happen around you and to you during the day that is going to demand your thinking. But I'm going to tell you this. You sleep about eight hours a day. You're awake about 16 hours a day. You're working about eight. You've got another whole eight hours to decide what you're going to allow going through your head and what you're thinking about during the day. And I'm going to just leave you with this one thought. Think about what you think about. Hey, God bless everyone. Let me pray for you before we go. Father, everybody that watched me today, I'm asking you to bless them, help them get their mind right. And if you don't know Jesus, Jesus says, call on me and I'll answer you and show you great and mighty things. And whoever will call on the name of the Lord will be saved. Romans 10, 9 and 10. Hey, God bless you. Have a great day. Thank you for watching.